everybody. Today we'll talk a little bit about pecans. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Um, I take, there, there's four pecan trees in that picture and I took that picture last November. Every November, it's not far from my house. I take a picture of these four trees. I've got pictures going back for, for many years. And I see the same thing in these pictures. The second tree has a lot of leaves on it. The other three trees have very little leaves on them. The trees that hold their leaves the longest are going to be your better trees. So you can ride around in the fall and look. And you can estimate what your next year's crop might be because if a pecan tree loses its leaves before October 1, your next year's crop is always going to be zero. So every day after October 1, hopefully you're gaining pecans. Now things can happen during the year that, you know, you may have a rainy year and have a lot of, there's a bad disease on pecans called a scab that makes the black spots on the leaves and the shuck and the nuts may fall off early. Well, that can happen if you got a lot of rain uh, in the summer, but this goes back even if you have a good year if your tree loses its leaves before October 1, your next year's crop is nothing. And Dr. Bill Goff was our pecan speci specialist for a long time there at Auburn. And uh, this is what he would say, the secret to pecan production. And everything I tell about today is going to be, how can we make this happen? But the secret to pecan production is maintain healthy foliage to increase carbohydrate reserves. What that means is we got to keep everything we do to this pecan in our mind has to be what can we do to keep the leaves on this tree as healthy as possible. And this one's not as good of a picture, but I got two pecan trees here. One on the left, one on the left has green leaves on it. The one on the right, the there's very little leaves still on it. I took that picture late one summer. I took this picture this past year. Uh, on the side of the road, it, a lot of these trees are planted too close together. We'll talk about spacing and all later, but I wanted to make a note of there's one pecan tree there. You can see that it still has some leaves on it where the others, those leaves have dropped and also pay attention to how many leaves you're holding on to in the fall of the year. We need to plant these trees in a well-drained soil of uh, uh, area that has trees growing all around it that cuts down on air circulation, that might not be the best thing. There are certain trees we would plant that are scab resistant. I told you pecan scab is the number one disease problem we have. And there are some trees that are resistant to scab. And you might think about planting those in, in your planting. Um, we definitely want to plant correctly and don't plant the trees too deep. That's a very common thing spacing the trees when that tree's young and we plant them 30 feet apart it looks like a long way but you got to think if a tree's 30 feet apart from another that only gives each tree 15 feet to grow in either direction before they're touching so 80 feet is kind of a minimum now pecan growers will plant them farmers will plant them a lot closer knowing they may cut near half of them out at a later point in time so if you do not plan on cutting any out I would plant them 80 to 100 feet apart to start with. There's two terms, protandrous and protogenous. And that we call them type one or type two to be simple, but it's talking about the when the flowers are uh, receptive. And, and the type one, the male flower develops first and is sheds pollen, but the female part of a type one is not receptive. On the type two, the female flower is open and receptive to pollen, but the male flowers aren't releasing yet. So pecan trees don't need to, this is, is a good thing. We want cross pollination. We don't want one pecan tree pollinating itself. You want at least two. And if I was planting, if it depends on how many trees I'm planting, but if I'm planting six or eight pecan trees, I might have six or eight different pecan trees. I might not have two of the same one in a planting. Um, if you're planting thousands, that you wouldn't do that, but if you're just planting a few, that would be encouraged. Cross-pollinated nuts have higher percent kernel than self-pollinated. Self-pollinated self nuts drop off the tree 
in higher proportions than do cross-pollinated. And a lot of times we don't think about it unless you're growing seedlings that you're going to graft. All these trees you see is grown from a nut. And then at some point in time, someone grafts a uh, sign wood or a cutting of a desirable tree, a different pecan tree onto that seedling. Well, cross-pollinated nuts are more vigorous than the self-pollinated nuts. So it's important to, for your cross-pollination. So if you only have one tree, your neighbor may have a tree. These the trees are wind pollinated, so it could come. If you can see other pecan trees in the area, that pollen can come from somewhere else. But if there's no trees around, I would encourage you to have two different trees that you need a type one and a type two. You don't need two different type ones, for instance, or two different type twos. You need it so that the, the pollen is, is being released when the, the flower is receptive. A lot of times, uh, a lot of people may have heard pecans are alternate bearers, and that's true. If you have a heavy year, a pecan tree needs to get grow six or eight inches this summer to produce nuts next summer or next fall. So if you have a heavy load this year, it's not growing a lot, the next year's crop may be very light. If you have a light year the next year, you probably are putting on six or eight inches of growth. So that next year could be heavy and all. So why do you have a, a light load one year? You might've had excessive load the year before. You might've had, I've told you, keep those leaves healthy. You might've had some kind of disease or, or insect damage that would uh, cause that tree to drop its leaves early. You might have some kind of drought stress. You can't irrigate a tree enough during the months of August and September. That's when that nut is really filling out. So if you have a way to irrigate, that would be something to think about. Uh, inadequate fertility, if, if we're gonna talk about how to fertilize and that sort of thing, but soil testing and leaf samples is what we use to see what's in that tree and what we can do to help on the nutrition. And then I said that our spacing needs to be 80 to 100 feet apart, and that would be a good idea. Uh, sometimes we need to cut some trees out. But uh, what can we do to favor a good crop? Well, a farmer might go in if, if they have a heavy load, and if they got a heavy load, you know, all the other growers may have a heavy load, and the prices may be cheaper, for instance. They may go thin some of their trees, shake some nuts off, during the summer so they would ensure a better crop the following year. That's something that can be done. Keeping these leaves as clean as possible with some kind of a spray schedule for disease and insects would be a big help. And if we can irrigate late in the season, it's important. Sometimes if we have a heavy crop, not necessarily a light crop, but on the year that you have a heavy crop, we might give uh, some extra fertilizer later in the summer. And then some of these trees that are planted way too close together, believe it or not, you can make a crop go up, production go up by taking some trees out. So that's something to think about. We need half sunlight and half shade hitting the ground. If you think about it in those terms, if you're in a pecan orchard, we need sunlight hitting the ground. We need shade hitting the ground about half and half. If you got all shade, you won't have much grass to cut, but your, your production is just not going to be that good. How can we improve our uh, production? Well, we're going to talk about several things, and the first we'll talk about is fertility. We can take leaf samples off the trees in the summertime. We're taking, just like you would take soil test out of the ground, you would take samples um, off of these leaves and send her a lab. They'll tell you what is lacking in that tree and that'll help us know how to fertilize that tree the following year so we can look at our crop load to know uh, if you're light one year you're going to be heavy the next is a, is a way to pre uh, predict in that uh, look at the deficiencies in the tree i can tell you if you can see the deficiency by looking at the leaf the the leaf sample would really a leaf sample can find things that you can't see and then I'll talk about how to fertilize. But again, I, I want to see a soil test and a leaf sample. But uh, general guidelines is put a pound of triple 13 per year age of the tree up to 25 pounds per tree. So if you got a tree five years old, you put five pounds triple 13. 
If it's 10 years old, 10 pounds, 25 years old, 25 pounds. But if it's 100 years old, you're still just putting 25 pounds, strip 13. A pound of 3400 per year age of tree up to 20 pounds per tree. A tenth of a pound of zinc up to two pounds per tree. Per year age of tree up to two pounds per tree. And then I don't have any idea about the line. Uh, we, I've got to see that soil test to know we want our pH to be around 6, 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. Uh, something in that neighborhood and 50 pounds of lime per 1,000 square feet is the equivalent of a ton per acre. We'll go from the base of the tree one and a half times the drip line you know, when we fertilize. And that the feeder roots or root hairs that actually take in nutrients are, are on the tips of the roots. So they can go beyond the branches. So think about that when you're fertilizing. When to do it, it kind of depends on where you live in the state. Um, my advice is wait till I get leaves on the tree. If you're fertilizing early and there's no leaves on the tree, it's not being, the, the nitrogen's only good for a couple of weeks when you put it out. I would wait till I, I, the trees are greening up and I'll add my fertilizer and it just depends. We can do this on a monthly basis. We can do it one time and not the rest of the year. It all depends on how much time you have and how good you want this tree to be uh, fertilized. A lot of times the old trees would just fertilize once a year. The younger trees will divide it in two applications, but it can be divided up into more than that. But I would at least suggest one to two applications. I already talked about water. Those nuts are really filling out in August and September. We need an inch to an inch and a half of rain a week. You need a rain gauge. If you do not get uh, the rain, you may need to irrigate if at all possible. And remember where I said about where the root hairs were, it's not just putting water. I mean, we can water the root zone is what we're trying to do. Mulching the trees can be a big help. Uh, studies have been done, 60% growth is increased from mulch. People ask me all the time how long it takes pecan trees before they start bearing fruit. And my usual answer is it depends on you and how you're going to tend to that tree. I can't answer that without knowing well, one, certain trees may bear a little earlier, but I'm thinking about, are you doing weed control? Are you mulching? Are you irrigating? You see what I mean? Is the tree getting enough sunlight? Um, wood chips, I don't, in a way, it doesn't, maybe doesn't matter to me. I, I want it mulched with something. So pine straw, pine bark, old hay, those are all good things to do. And it can be deep, but I like it to be wide and do not make these mulch volcanoes and pile mulch around, around the tr trunk um, it can be thin right there at the trunk, but then it can get thicker further away, and I like it to be wider if at all possible, and that just shared another study there. Here's a, a pecan tree that's the, keeping the weeds down around it. Weed control is a big deal. Uh, studies have been done where just two weeds around uh, a young pecan tree reduces growth and nut set of that tree. So any kind of other than bare ground or in mulch, that's what I want to see around the pecan tree. No weeds, no grass. On the left is, a, is two different pecan orchards, left and right. On the right is more of what farmers would do, and they keep these weed-free strips. And that's the area they would fertilize in as well, uh, irrigating in. On the right, this is uh, the left. This is more of what homeowners would do and uh we could be wider than that, but at least that, that's certainly better than nothing. In summary, plant recommended cultivars, plant at the right spacing. Most Again, most people plant them way too close together if they're not going to take out trees. And it's important. I like the idea of planting them closer together. And every tree doesn't have the same growth rate. So it might be if, if one's not growing well, that may be one you take out. And also we may want to take some out anyway, but if you're not taking them out, uh, I would space them further apart, uh, collect leaf samples and soil test to know how to fertilize properly, and then irrigate if at all possible, but that is hard to do if they're way off in a pasture by themselves. Manage the weeds and mulch. That's something anybody can do. Manage the weeds and mulch. Even if we can't irrigate, we can manage the weeds and mulch. Other topics that we're not talking about today, but it's just any debris that falls to the ground, just limbs and leaves. If you could haul that off site and burn it or just haul it off site so it's nowhere around, that would help. 
And we're not talking really about training trees, but I don't like narrow crotch angles. The wind can break those apart. Uh, there's some information we could talk about sometime on how to train a tree, but um, we do have to train these as they're growing and not just let them grow naturally. A lot of times if you leave it, let them grow naturally, you'll have a lot of limbs coming out of one point and you'll have a lot of narrow crotch angles and the angle, the branches starting from the same point are weak branches. And we're not really talking about grafting, but graft, there's some nurseries where you can buy these trees already grafted, but you can graft your own and we in extension will teach grafting classes. And we can certainly share more information with you about that. And if you have any questions, you can contact me or any other uh, commercial agent 